welcome to the Cinema ATL Podcast. The Cinema ATL Podcast is a weekly podcast that examines the world of entertainment through the lens of local NFL filmmakers. That would be us, your hosts. I'm Michael D. Friedman, and that is... Martin Kelly. And today we're taking a look back at a forgotten film by Noah Baumbach. Uh, his debut film, Kicking and Screaming, this three-time Oscar nominee's debut film. But first, Martin, why don't you tell our audience how they can help the podcast out? Well, you can help the podcast out by commenting and rating this podcast and subscribing to this podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. The comments and the ratings will really help people notice it. And you can listen to this podcast on your favorite podcast format, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Amazon Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and YouTube, and even more, I'm sure. Yes, and we also want to hear from you. You can always tweet us at CinemaATL or at my personal account at Badger33. Or you can hit me up at at Marte underscore real one. And don't forget to check us out on Instagram. We're at Cinema ATL Podcast, all one word. Check us out for all the fun stuff we're doing there. Definitely, definitely. Or if you're a legacy website fan, you can check us out at CinemaATL.com, as always. Well, before we get into our discussion about kicking and screaming, which is not to be confused with the Will Ferrell movie of the same name. Um, this Correct. one's from 1995. Uh, right. I just wanted to bring up a little news item that came out this week. Um, unfortunately, it's a sad day for moviegoers, especially those in California. Uh, I know we're a Atlanta podcast, but, uh, you know, Martin, you and I have been to um, the Cinerama Dome, uh, the Arclight Cinemas in L.A. Yeah. Uh, quite yeah. a bit when we go out there. It's one of my favorite places to see a movie. And unfortunately, due to financial issues the entire arc light pacific uh theater chain is forcing to shutter their doors um so this is really disappointing yeah it's totally disappointing like you mentioned yeah it's a fun theater and and anytime you can watch it watch a movie out uh in it it was always a pleasure and so uh definitely i love to go in out there and and it's just just he- you know heading past that theater because it's uh right. it's such a cool a cool icon iconic uh, theater but yeah it's very sad for theater goers in california unfortunately but i did hear some people say you know uh think about maybe uh, another company maybe swooping in and, and taking over the actual space so that may be a possibility i i grant that but at the same time it's kind of a sad day yeah i mean i hope so that's such a iconic like you said iconic landmark in la i mean it was featured in once upon a time in hollywood pretty prominently Yep. Um, as mu- a bunch of other films too. Sure. Um, sure. but there, you know, movie premieres were there. I mean, I went and saw, um, a Kevin Smith, uh, had a screening there of all his films. I went out there one year and that was really fun. It's just, uh, it's just sad that this, you know, this institution is forcing to close, you know, due to, you know, the COVID crisis caused them to be shuttered for a year and they just announced that they weren't going to reopen. But like you said, I hope, Somebody comes in and and opens a theater there, but the the bigger issue is is that this could happen to theaters all across the country, and it's you know this is a theater chain that has right. a ton of right. theaters and screens in in California, so totally. it's not just one theater that's closing; it's it's affecting a, a pretty big. Uh, yeah, I mean a lot of theater. yeah a lot of attention has been paid to that particular one because it's so iconic but yeah this is not just one theater this is a a, a big chain a pretty significant chain of theaters that is closing so and we've been talking about it the whole time uh during you know the lockdown uh for this past year we've been worried you know about the future of of movie going right. in theaters so you know this is not this is not a good a good day for that for sure so, I mean, I would just say if you are a movie fan uh, and want to see movies in theaters, you know, once you get your vaccine, you feel comfortable, try to support your local theater. You know, there's a lot of indie uh, out- outlets here. I mean, Plaza Theater has been showing movies for a while now. Um, go yep. out and support them. Go out and support, you know, the Midtown Art Cinema, all the all the local theaters and the big theaters as well. They all need you your are, help. Yeah, so yeah. Exactly. Um, go well, see a movie when you can. Exactly. Whatever your favorite theater is, go out and, and see a movie as soon as you can. I think I think that's important and, and try to double up on it. Uh, whatever your pace right. used to be, tr- try and double up on it. Double up on it, but don't don't just buy one ticket and go dive into another. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> another yeah, don't street. don't don't you know don't uh, what what do we call it? Uh, double dip. Uh, <laughs> double yeah. 
I, there was there was uh, a name for it when we used to be able to do this, you know. So, oh, theater hop! Don't theater hop. Theater hop. Yeah. <laughs> all right. But, well, yeah. I mean, I, I think we just all agree that you know, let's let's go out and support cinema, save the theaters. Um, but the topic we're here for is kicking and screaming the 1995 film, not the Will Ferrell film. And that's so right. let's just get into it. Sure. So um, this forgotten film, and I don't know how forgotten it is, honestly. Again, this is iffy. I think it's out of mind, you know, out of sight, out of mind lately. Um, so, you know, for people who know of this film, don't don't act like, you know, we're trying to fool you with something forgotten. Because if you remember it, that's great. But we just want to bring it to everyone's attention. And, and of course, Kicking and Screaming is the debut film of Noah Baumbach, who is the writer and director of the film. He also, uh, you know, co-wrote the uh, story by. So there was an, another story by credit. But he also he wrote the screenplay and directed it. And uh, I'll give you a quick synopsis of it. Uh, the, the short one is a bunch of guys hang around their college for months after graduation, continuing life much as the one before graduation. Well, that doesn't really give you the picture. So I'll talk about a little bit, go into a little bit more detail. After college graduation, Grover's girlfriend, Jane, tells him he's, she's moving to Prague to study writing. He decides not to accompany her. Instead, he stays with his friends, all of whom can't work out uh, what they're going to do after college. Nobody wants to make any big decisions that would radically change their lives. Yet none of them wants to end up like Chet the professional student who tends bar and is in his 10th year of university studies. So uh, this, this, this came out kind of um, at a perfect time for you and you and I, you know, cause we were, we were not too far right. out of college uh, at the time that this film came out and uh, certainly can, can uh, identify with the, the, the feelings of some of the characters, but uh, why I like it a lot is just because of that. And it, it packs a lot, into one movie. I mean, it is about that feeling and it is about, you know, traditional sort of like, uh, bromances and, 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 and love and whether, whether, and especially that young age, whether you should take a big leap for love or not. Uh, mm -hmm. also this uncertainty of facing adult life. I mean, it's, it can be traumatizing in certain ways. I mean, sometimes it's exciting, sometimes it's traumatizing. And so, um, this film deals with it in a really funny way. And it's got a great, talented cast. So um, that's one of the reasons I love it. I'm not going to talk, talk in, in this intro too much about it, because I know we, you and I are going to have a lot of discussion about it. But uh, uh, that's that's why I picked it. I think it's just a fine film, and it sort of captures its time really well. Uh, but with that said, I'm going to bring up a couple, a couple of things about it that, you know, that don't play well today. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, this film, like you said, it, like, you know, there's something to be said about, you know, the time in which you see a film. Um, and like you said, um, this came out like right before I graduated college. So, you know, I, I graduated in 97, this came out in 95. And I don't think I saw this until like right after I graduated college, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, and so it really did hit home. Um, it, and it's one of those films that's like, you can kind of make fun of the characters, but it's also a situation that, that people are, are are in when they're, you know, getting out of college and they don't have really any direction in their lives. Right. And, um, it's just, uh, you know, it really captures that moment. And even though these characters are kind of more, um, scholarly than, you know, a typical, you know, right. maybe college mm -hmm. student might be, um, it, it does, it does resonate in that regard. And sure. I, I kind of related it to a forgotten film that we did, um, previously metropolitan uh sure. similar similar in tone uh, uh similar mm -hmm. in the, you know the kind of the the class of the characters um so these right. are a little bit like these are a little bit more upper class people and so sometimes it's easy to dismiss upper class problems um and and granted they are kind of first world problems but Absolutely, it is yeah. something that can be related to and and i think the the way noah bombach uh, approaches it it's just told in a funny way so that we're laughing at them and with them kind of at the same time right, right? totally totally and let's let's yeah let's briefly talk about uh, the people involved just to get that out of the way and then we'll probably yeah well i wanted to bring up specific. first though i wanted to bring up uh just no no for people that might not know noah bombach mm -hmm. um okay 
you know, he's gone on to to do some, you know, very highly acclaimed work. Um, this was his debut film, but, you know, he did, you know, um, he, he, he did uh, Squid and the Whale, Marriage Story, Francis Ha, um, a lot of really, you know, well, <laughs> yeah, well-received films. Um, he actually wrote the screenplay for Fantastic Mr. Fox, right? a bunch right. of other things like that. So um, this is really, and, and a Life Aquatic too, I forgot about that. Um, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you know, he's really partnered with, with, with Wes Anderson, you know, as he moved on. Um, but, uh, I just wanted to get people familiar with, with Noah Baumbach, if that's not a name that they might not have, uh, you know, you know, he's not a right. hugely popular director, writer, but, uh, he is, he is quite accomplished. Sure. Sure. Definitely. And so, um, on that note, uh, I want to mention his sort of, uh, story by credited co-writer, which was Bo Berkman. Um, and then one of the associate producers, uh, is a name that, that many people may know. Uh, Jason Blum of, you know, famous of Blumhouse, which is quite a, quite a juggernaut these days. Uh, and Jason Blum actually. Wow. You know what? I didn't even know. I didn't even make that connection. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. That connection he's all. the king. He's the king of horror, horror movies. And uh, Jason Blum uh, yeah. is one of the, one of the producers on this film. So uh, he was actually roommates with uh, Noah Baum back in college. So that kind of explains um, how both of them sort of were motivated together to do, to do movies. So. Um, that's mm-hmm. an interesting note. Uh, the cast uh, includes Josh Hamilton, uh, Chris Eigeman, which again, similarities to Metropolitan, continuing because mm-hmm. uh, to me, to me, he's he's the undisputed prince of uh, indie film at, of that time period, in my opinion. Right, uh, right. Olivia Olivia Dabo plays Jane, uh, somebody who is hilarious and 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 it's kind of you know hadn't gotten as many roles as I think he might've gotten, but he's gotten quite a few. Uh, Carlos Jacot as Otis. Uh, he's very mm-hmm. funny. Uh, Jason Wiles plays Skippy and Parker Posey. And Skippy, Skippy actually uh, delivers one of the most impactful lines in the whole film. <laughs> and we'll talk mm-hmm. about that a little bit later, but then Parker Posey uh, in her heyday as well as she plays in Miami. Eric Stoltz plays Chet, uh, a young Cara Boono. Uh, plays Kate and Perry Reeves of uh, Entourage fame uh, plays Amy actually in the film. And then I forgot to list in the notes here, but Elliot Gould also makes a cameo as a, uh, right. as a uh, Grover's father. Right. And, and Cara Buono um, is actually, um, I think that's, I don't know how to pronounce her name, but I think it's Buono. Um, but uh, she's actually in stranger things. Um, yep. She plays yep. the mom. She plays the and, mom. Uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, no, she's so she's terrific, and I I, no? I I I like I've I followed her career after this as well. But uh, she's terrific in this film, and of course she's she's terrific in a lot of other things. She was in Sopranos for a while as well. But uh, yeah, it's you know again quite a quite a cast. Um, some of these folks um, reunited with um, Noah Baumbach for some of his later work, in particular Chris Eigenman and uh, Eric Stoltz. They basically followed yeah. him for a couple of couple of the films. We're not. We're not discussing the film uh, now, but Mr. Jealousy is also a, uh, you know, another film that, uh, that they did together. And uh, I really like that film as well. So yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. If you, if you enjoy kicking and screaming, I recommend checking out Mr. Jealousy, which is probably more of a forgotten film <laughs> than, right. than kicking and screaming is. It could be, it could be, um, it could be because uh, kicking and screaming, actually, you know, one of the things I was surprised to find uh, later is that, it didn't actually win any major awards, not like mm-hmm. Metropolitan, which, you know, um, surprisingly did, which, you know, is, is, is something that uh, that uh, a lot of people don't know about it. But uh, it did get sort of universal critical acclaim, actually. Um, right. And so that was uh, that was sort of um, what kept, you know, I guess uh, the buzz going about Noah Baumbach and he became one of like the 10 that year's 10 best uh, new, mm-hmm. new faces or what have you. Uh, but again, you could tell, you know, that he really knows how to write dialogue and, 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 and direct actors uh, even in this sort of really very indie, this is totally indie. I mean, this, this film you can tell um, is done on the kind of budget that we make movies on, <laughs> you know, not really right. uh, a little, a little more than we we've, we've had, but uh, at the same time, not too far off. It certainly was. Uh, well, it's also, film. 
it's also very indie and in just the, the way it's told, you know what I mean? It's like, mm-hmm. I mean, you, you try to, syno- uh, to do a synopsis of the plot, but there really is no plot to this film. Honestly, um, there's a very ma- minor like through line about, you know, the relationship between Grover and, and Jane, but um, mm-hmm. overall, it's just a series of, you know, uh, a year in the life of these, uh, post-college graduates and um and there's no you know not not the typical hollywood story arcs that you would see or the um you know the the circle where you know the, uh, your hero goes through you yeah, know, yeah, all these yeah. different stages totally. and stuff like that it's more it's more vignettes about these people's lives and and how they're adjusting uh to post-college life which is what one of the things that appeals to me about it sure right? sure I do think I think you're right, absolutely. But it also is has got some really good framing devices to help keep sort of that through line mm-hmm. uh, effective. Because a lot over the years, I've I went from liking the film because of the um, the collection to collective of friends to actually really liking the love story in the film. Right. And so um, it, it it you know it was always there, but. I've appreciated that storyline a lot more over the years uh, after watching it multiple times. Right. And I, I think that also has, a, has the effect of um, being away from that age now. <laughs> so, right. so, you know, suddenly these people's problems don't see a, seem as, um, you know, valid anymore. <laughs> once you've had that experience, you know? Right. Um, so it, it gives a, you know, a little perspective. So I, I you know, I think that, like you said, like, it's, just, it's a story of its time. And if you were, if you were our age, when this came out, you would really probably feel that way. Right. Mm-hmm. You would identify more with these college dudes um, who are trying to, to get their shit together more than, more than the love story necessarily. Right. And um, you know, the, the setup of this love story is really kind of interesting and in, in that, you know, um, and I talked about Mr. Jealousy, which is this film he did after, which was more of a straightforward, um, not not quite, but more of a straightforward romantic comedy. And I think right. that's kind of why it's probably not as uh, well known is because people thought, oh, it's just a romantic comedy, you know, just mm-hmm. a romantic comedy. Um, I'm putting that in quotes. Um, but, uh, you know, it's easy to write off romantic comedies as being, you know disposable so right, um, right. so the 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 the, ba- the basics are there in this film as well um, mm-hmm. and I think he's really effective on that and he also kind of subverts the romantic comedy tropes that you see especially towards the end of the film and I'm not gonna try to give right. any spoilers away but um, there, there's a very almost cliche romantic comedy scene that does not necessarily play out the same way that you might think it would it it's subverted, right? Exactly. It's subverted for sure. Um, but at the same time, that 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 becomes a really uh, seminal moment uh, in the film, and it it, it right. speaks to that 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 whole theme of you know when is it when is it the time to take that big chance on love, right? And so that's part of that maturation process, you know, as a young adult. So not only is it uh, you know dealing with this the the trauma of leaving the familiar environment of being a student and trying to become a real person, so to speak. Uh, mm-hmm. It's also about whether you need to take that leap now or, or wait, you know what I mean? O- on love. And so I saw, you know, it's all combined really effectively uh, in the film. And, and again, just some, some terrific uh, dialogue and, 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 and situations. Right. I think uh, that's what really makes this film stand apart from, absolutely from other, indie films or other romantic comedies um the the witty dialogue the the one-liners that are just like su- they're subtle enough that you might not even real. it's not like it's not like you're gonna laugh out loud at it but they are really right. funny lines absolutely. that are delivered absolutely um, in this what, film especially by chris eigman's character yeah yeah what i was gonna say like you know without without getting too too crazy like what what's one of your favorite lines um, well, it was in our movie quote Monday. It was the the line about uh, uh, I started scheduling w- go to bed and wake yep, up uh, yep. as they're as if they were two different <laughs> things in my day plan. Yep. No, and that was um, perfect. Yes, that's you alluded to the fact that that's basically been 
that's basically been most people's lives uh, right <laughs> over the past it's resonated year. a lot more this year than it, than it, than it <laughs> even did before i right. also like um uh i also like uh the um uh, otis's character a lot and the reactions he has and um how he's so unsure of himself and how his first thing is to deny everything but then immediately admit to it like yeah Right. Like when he's at the graduation yep. party and he's wearing a pajama top and he's like, are you wearing a pajama top? And he's like, <laughs> no. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite lines uh, of Otis is um, they're talking about how they'll, they'll be, um, how old they'll be in 20 years. And uh, uh, he's, he's like, he's going through the line and then they said, Otis and Otis will be 42. And Otis is like, thanks. Like, <laughs> he, like he's granted permission. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be 42 you know hilarious and of course uh when skippy wants to create a name uh, a name for the group for the for the group of friends and of course right. you know, we we were very inspired by this this line uh in our in our days uh and he's like you know we should be something tough like cougars <laughs> <laughs> and yeah if you guys if you know us that's uh how the cougars film group got its name <laughs> that's right that's right so yeah, I mean that's that's why I mean the, the, those witty lines of dialogue just come shining through, and I think that's kind of showcasing Noah Baumbach's writing style that that, mm-hmm. uh, that you know goes through all of his work moving forward. It's it's that subtle humor, but you know serious undertones to it as well. Totally, um, totally. Yeah, I like uh, one more line I'll say before we get to you know more thoughts is um, uh, despite my efforts to do nothing things happen. So <laughs> right. that, I think that's, that's uh, a good way to put it for sure. <laughs> you can, you could try to avoid life all you want, but things are going to happen anyway. Oh yeah. I don't think we can get off, <laughs> we get off the lines yet because uh, I, another one popped into my head was the one about um, I'm nostalgic for conversations. I had, <laughs> I haven't even thought of yet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, which fits uh, fits what we talk about about nostalgia and you know Mm -hmm. you know how things how that fits into to movies in particular. Um, Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So you know, you know, if we talk more about it, we may be giving away too much of the film, and so we want to do that, right? So um, I guess I want to talk a little bit about music that I thought was fantastic. Um, This is the first that I'm aware of, of hearing uh, an artist that's, uh, that's uh, kind of maybe, I don't know, to say obscure is probably not correct, but uh, forgotten artist, uh, Jimmy Dale Gilmore. And uh, he's got a few songs in the film, but the one that stands out the most is Braver Newer World. Uh, I think that's fine, a fine song. Also, Freedy Johnston has a couple of songs. Yeah, that well. uh, the, end, the end song is uh, mm-hmm. bad one of the Bad Reputation is one of the... Uh, that's what I love that song. I think that song's really. Yeah, really I really, I really dig that song a lot. And I don't know if that was f- necessarily from this movie. Like, I don't know if it was written for the movie or if it was just used in in the in the film. But uh, it does have a. It wraps up the film, and it's just kind of a good note <laughs> to end. Right. On. No. No. Totally. And then the the the, the tunes by Jimmy Dale uh, Gilmore, they sort of, um, you know, they give an excuse for it. It's like um, that particular bar only plays country music, and right? So, um, but he, it's more than country. Uh, if you listen to it, it's, it's got, it's got a really cool quality to it, I think. And, uh, right. it helped me sort of discover him and I, I enjoy his music to this day. Actually, I, I listen to Jimmy Dale Gilmore sometimes. Hmm. Uh, so, you know, that's another, you know, subtle thing about the film. It's like, uh, it's got a, it's got a really cool soundtrack, uh, for, for an indie of that day. Right. So I wanted to talk a little bit about couple of funny things that you, you you look back upon reflection and especially you and I could probably appreciate because of, uh, you know, our being filmmakers ourselves. Uh, like one, um, you know, there's a scene uh, where somebody's supposedly in a rental car. <laughs> right. <laughs> and yeah. uh, it's the least believable rental car on film <laughs> ever. It's, it's ridiculously dirty. So I can picture that they didn't have a car and somebody like a grip had to provide their car for the scene, right. you know, because we've been there before where we've had to do that. So that, you know, I laugh at that scene now, not because it's funny in the movie, but because it's funny because of uh, the situation 
uh, of them trying to pass that car off as a rental car. Well, you never know. I mean, maybe you got it from a really shitty rental company. <laughs> I mean, really, it's a. Ri- it does a- kind of fit the characters. Uh, it does. It uh, does. What's going on in his life? So true. <laughs> but yeah, that is yeah, true. But I'm pretty sure that it was. Yeah, it was because <laughs> they did. I mean, they could have at least washed the thing. <laughs> right. But exactly. maybe it would have shown how old it was if they washed it. Maybe they preferred right. the dirty it could be. version of it. But I just picture I just picture the call like we we got to get a car and then it's like you know Jimmy's got a car <laughs> and, right. he, and he drives it into the scene. Uh, but that that's really funny just because of the filmmaking stuff. And then right. one scene that is out of place that I notice a lot now when I rewatch it, which I didn't really care the first time, is um, that scene you mentioned about the TV commercial. Right. That that leads to a bar scene, right? Except that the bar scene seems way out of way out of whack uh, because you know they leave characters at a site and then show up, and those characters right. look like they've been there forever. Right. Yeah, I, I noticed that too, um, especially um, Eric Stoltz's character who's tending bar there. Right. In the very next scene, but he's at the house when they're going. When they leave. When they leave. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> but, they, you know. they, 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 they leave him in their own, in their house. That's right. one thing. And then, you know, they show up at the bar where he's already tending bar, which is crazy. So I mean, it's that's a funny indie, little thing. Th- that's, that's indie, indie filmmaking, filmmaking for you. And, uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, maybe, you know, Back then, when you were making a film, you're really, really using film. Uh, and so right. maybe there was no way for them to get Still, a really yeah. good transition there and they didn't have anything to fill in there. So, um, exactly, exactly. And, you know, it could just have been an edit choice that, you know, maybe it was supposed to go a different way, but right. it ended up edited, editing. Or you could look at it, it was intentionally and intentionally funny that he's. Yeah, he's yeah. already there attending bar. <laughs> By the yeah, time yeah, they left him there, but he's already there attending bar. Right, that would, that would, yeah, you could look at it that way too, pretty. Funny. But just some little things after repeated viewing that I noticed. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is definitely an indie film. It's got rough edges to it, but uh, you know, overall, it's an enjoyable film. And um, you know, if you're looking at a film to kind of learn how to write you know, this type of dialogue. I think this is a good one to check out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, now, is there anything else you want to say? Cause there's a couple of things that I, that I think, you know, should be brought up about, about the film that are a little bit problematic of the film. And so, you know, as much as I love the film, you know, I want to point it out a little bit. No, man, you go ahead. I'm, uh, uh okay. I'm obviously not as in tune with, uh, well, if you think the about world this, as you are. <laughs> no, no, no. If you, I mean, I'm think about kidding. the day, the day and time. I mean, you, you, right, you right. know, you know as well as I do. You know, social mores have changed uh, mm-hmm. quite a bit, and so there's a relationship in the film which I love. I love right. this relationship, but it yeah. is very problematic. It's that did uh, kind of occur know, to me <laughs> that uh, you know there's a, a college grad basically uh, dating a high school senior, right. and so. This kind of, you know, smacks of, uh, you know, Manhattan, like from Woody Allen almost, or, mm-hmm. you know, something something like that. And, and that, of course, is is not the kind of thing that, that would be non-controversial these days, for sure. No, definitely sure. not. Well, so, I mean, I, when I, yeah, I, t- I kind of like, you know, when we rewatched this before we did the, the podcast, I hadn't, it's been a while since I'd watched it and I had like almost totally forgot about that, but it, it's really top of mind right now, especially with all the Matt Gates stuff going on. And uh, oh, yeah, um, yeah. so, yeah, I mean, 17 year old, you know, dating a 22 year old. So, yeah. And I, but, think I mean, that, you know, it's not, it's not as bad as the Matt Gates thing, but no, yeah, totally. And, and, yeah. And, and also the grooming, I mean, it's, 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 you know, the idea of, of this old, this adult grooming right. young woman, you right. know, that kind of thing, you know, it could, it could be viewed as that, you know, I don't view it that way just because right. I think, the, the relationship in the film is, is, is sincere and organic and, and sweet, but you know, it's something that, that would certainly raise alarm bells these days if it was uh, being made now. Right. And, 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 you know, you know, I brought up the Matt Gates thing, but this is nowhere near like that. You know, this is, you know, somebody fresh out of college. Um, the age difference is it really isn't that much, but yeah, it's still frowned upon, but uh, um 
yeah, it's it's definitely not like like that, <laughs> right? Um, right. And in the in the movie, it's treated as as a, as a you know a mutually loving relationship and not a right, not a like absolutely a, like you said, a, not like a grooming relationship. But. Right, absolutely, absolutely. But you know, I I needed to point it out uh, in case we point some people who've never seen it and then they right. maybe get triggered. <laughs> <laughs> But hopefully not, because it's it's not meant to do that, and it shouldn't do that. Because right, again, I mean, there's a lot of things different about this film that 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 definitely show the time of the film. Um, the the you know the male centric cast uh, being amongst mm-hmm. them. I mean, the yeah. the women in it, while while not totally just. Um, objects of men's sexual desires but uh there's a lot of that in it too right there's absolutely um, yeah the, you know the skibby the character keeps you know talking about how he's gonna you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> very no, on point uh, very on point things about what he wants to do to to women and then he says if you know what i'm talking about <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> that, like, well, yeah that was so funny about is that is he's 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 acting like it's it's subtle what he's saying like it's a, yeah exactly <laughs> it's not subtle dude it's not subtle at all yeah right and it you know and then uh but the the grover character is actually doing those things that he's talking about so right. uh <laughs> with with freshman you know girls and 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 that's that's another problematic piece too but and right. you're right about the general relate you know the general portrayal of women i do like parker posey's character though she 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 comes up with some really cool yeah um, and, and cool counterpoints to that exactly in, 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 her character at least has has the wherewithal to to throw down you know what i mean like right, not just totally. take, take the take and, and she yeah and she totally like she has her own agency too it's like she's right. not she's not in the background she takes agency of her her choices so you know i think that's one positive thing but in general correct it's, it's and not to an extent olivia well. davo's character as well um on direct you're right absolutely you know absolutely especially when it comes to the scholarly um mm-hmm debates right yeah absolutely she usually absolutely. comes out on top in those so and she, you know and she's also you know the master of her own destiny which is right. part of part of the conundrum she's the only the one spaces right she's the only one right. of this group who is in control of her own destiny right yeah absolutely absolutely so two two exceptions but i think some people could view it you know as as being a little bit weak in, in female portrayals for sure right i mean that's a kind of a a legacy of Films in general. Uh, no, well, absolutely. No, absolutely. Know. And it, absolutely. it's good that we've moved past it, but it is, this, you know, it's, I'm not trying to make excuses, but, you know. It, no, it is, but it, yeah. And it I don't want, I don't want people time. to think, yeah, I don't want people to think that this is uh, something that should keep you from watching the film. I think you should watch the film because it's, it's very cool. It's a very right. cool film. And so just take it on that level as a cool film about people who are, you know, dealing with the fear of the unknown and the fear of change and, uh, I think uh, watch it on that level, and I think you'll be entertained. And speaking of watching it, um, this is actually now available on Netflix. If you if you have a Netflix subscription, you can watch it for free. It's also available, I believe, on Tubi if you want to watch it with ads. Yep. Um, you, and you can watch it actually on YouTube for free. Oh, really? Absolutely. That's that's where I watched it actually the most recently. Uh, I do have. Well, Netflix. I have the Criterion Collection DVD personally. I do have. I do have that too. But oh, okay. um, but I did <laughs> I, I thought pull it, was it special. out. Sorry. No, no, no. It's that's great. That's a great, <laughs> a great DVD too. But but it was funny. You know, you mentioned the Netflix, which was you know my first instinct. But then uh, YouTube actually plays it, and uh, I don't remember any ads actually. So if you're logged in to YouTube, not not just sort of browsing without being logged into your account. I think you can watch it for free there. Well, great. Um, I think that about wraps it up uh, for our discussion. Uh, what do you all think about kicking and screaming? Uh, do, you, do you appreciate the film? Do you like the film? Is it uh, is it something that uh, is problematic based on you know, what our discussion we just had? Um, let us know what you're thinking about it. Um, like we said, you can always get in contact with us, with us on Twitter or uh, Instagram. We'd, like, we'd love to hear what you have to say. Um, but other than that, uh, gotta wrap it up. Uh, I want to thank Eureka Failure for providing the music as they do every week for us. 
And we want to thank you for listening. And Martin, uh, do you have any final words of wisdom? Uh, yeah, one last thing. Keep looking up, because that's the secret of life, according to Charlie Brown. Oh, good, good note. I will, I will put it in my day planner right after wake up. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> well, all right, y'all. We appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you back again next week, and I believe we'll be discussing the Oscars next week. So exciting! A little teaser for you. All right. Bye.